Hello everyone, my name is Andrew. I'm building a 12 and a half meter catamaran and I get a lot of questions about basically how do you know that your boat's going to stay together? How do you know it's strong enough? Um, and that's a really great question, uh, especially because I designed this boat myself. Um, and I just want to caveat, I'm not a professional. Um, so I did a lot of research and uh, I hope I've done everything right. But definitely um, if you're looking at doing something like this yourself, definitely um, consult with a naval architect because they're going to know a lot more than me. Um, and yeah, I can also recommend the boat Principles of Yacht Design. Um, that's a really good book that also um, gives you an overview into, into how all this works, um, especially if you're a sailor, but not with that much background as a naval architecture. It gives you a bit of an intro into how this stuff works. Um, and finally, you can purchase this uh, ISO 12215 um, standard, um, which tells you how to do all these calculations specifically. Um, it's a bit complicated, but uh, yeah. I'll give you a quick overview and, and let you know sort of some of the things I'm working with. Um, so yeah, the first step um, into figuring out whether your hull is ISO or making your design ISO 12215 compliant is basically um, to work your way through the calculations provided by the standard. Why do we do this? We just do this um, to use a standard um, that's well known. So we make sure that we're building our boat to, to sort of known strength um, strength numbers such that um, we can be sure that it all holds together. Um, so we start with basically some basic numbers of the boat, how long it is, um, how wide it is. And so for a catamaran, we look at the beam per hull, um, its displacement, how fast it will go, what category. So we want our boat to be able to cross an ocean, so that, that's higher standards um, and this kind of thing. And then we work with uh, our materials. And so basically what that means is, um, what kind of materials are we using? Um, like the foam core we're using, right? Right. My boat's made of mostly these composite panels. Um, so that's for the, this foam core, mostly 15 millimeters thick and the density of 80 uh, kilograms per meter cubed. Um, and, um, and we also are using some fiberglass so we can, we can um, calculate for the different kinds of fiberglass, how thick the, the skins will be. Um, and we can um, also sort of calculate for different kinds of layups, um, basically what we're doing. Um, so basically once we have our materials and we know what size boat we need, uh, the next thing we need to do is calculate how much pressure all the different um, panels will be under. So the, the standard gives some formulas basically. Um, they look kind of intimidating, but you just basically have to plug in the numbers um, and see. So the pressure is how much basically force is gonna be on each panel. So for the bottom panels, um, we can start with those and so the basically the ISO standard gives us a formula for calculating um, calculating how much pressure it's going to be under so we substitute in our values for um, our displacement and our length of water line um, we take the quadric root I think that is <laughs> oh no we yeah well anyways we uh, plug it into this formula um, and then we get basically a number um, and it has to be a minimum of, of 3.0 for sailing craft under 24 meters which is what this design is what's what the standard is for um, next we basically need to um, select some other parameters so basically for like for the category we, we don't scale down the numbers at all um, we check out the panel area um, so here, for example, we'll just take a 0.3 meters squared panel area um, for a small panel area. Um, and then we basically just will calculate the pressure on that panel. So in this case, we plug in all the numbers and we, we uh, get out 23.1 kilopascals. Um, and then finally, we can, we can add a dead, uh, dead rise angle. We plug it into even another calculation here um, and we get uh, a value of 18.5 kilopascals and then we check that there's a minimum pressure um, that we should use so if our calculations calculations came under that minimum pressure we would use that um, but our pressure comes up above so we use our our pressure of 18.5 for this bottom panel um, top sides it's a similar formulation um, you get another formula out it comes out to a bit less because the top sides are under less pressure than the bottom which has to you know keep all the water out while the boat's pressing down into the water. And uh, finally, we can do the same for the decks. We get another formula um, and it's, you know, the least pressure of all, because that just has to take the formula of you walking on top, the, the force of you walking on top of it. Um, 
And so basically, once we know the pressures, we can start engineering like what materials we need to use in these different parts of the boat. Um, so for the sandwich panels, like we're using with the foam core and the fiberglass skins, um, there's different kinds of failure modes that they have. The, the core um, can basically crack in half. So this is this core shear failure. Um, uh, or one of the skins can exceed its, um, basically its strength and, and break apart. Um, or the panel will just bend too much and the boat will be too, too wobbly. Um, and so out of these three, we calculate which is the, which is the limiting factor. And that's going to determine basically like where we have to add reinforcements. Um, so yeah. So for example, of the, of the bottom panels, we can calculate the core, the core shear stress using this formula here. Um, and then we use a safety factor of three, basically. So even though we calculate the pressure, we want to add a safety mar margin in case something goes wrong, um, or you know maybe maybe something wasn't put together right. We just want to be extra safe, so we're going to add basically a safety factor on top of that, um, so we're not right on the edge. Um, so we do that, and we get here. If we were to stick with our with our normal panels with some extra reinforcements um, in certain parts, we we could um, basically have a maximum. Um, spacing between reinforcements of 757 millimeters. Um, uh, but then so that's the core shear, so then we have to do the same for the skins. Um, so we can basically solve for that as well, plugging it into um, different equations. Um, and what we get out is basically um, a maximum here of uh, 4,950 millimeters. So the skin stress is definitely not the limiting factor. The skins are definitely strong enough. Um, so let's just check out the panel dis disflection. That's the last failure mode. Um, so we can calculate through that to make sure that our boat is rigid enough. We go through all these different formulas. Um, finally, we get that basically uh, we can have a maximum spacing of 1,233. So our limiting factor is the core shear. Um, and then we want to basically add a safety margin. So if we had a, a sandwich panel um, with the skins as described above, we could have a maximum spacing between stringers of um, 400 millimeters. Um, and so we get a safety factor that's 1.89, which is beyond the ISO minimum requirements. So yeah, uh, we can do the same for the top side panels and the deck panels as well. Um, and we get out similar sort of um, similar numbers for where we have to add extra structure and then where we have different parts of the boat we might choose to use a thicker core or thicker skins um, depending on how much force they're under. Um, so then with stringers um, basically we can just calculate how much how much force the stringers are going to be under um, in order to design those. Um, similar formulas that we're going to sort of go through and see, okay, what kind of thing. So we want to use this hat section. That's kind of like a similar concept to our sandwich panel, um, but slightly different because it needs to be just strong in, in, in one direction. Um, but it's sort of also separating away um, so we get uh, like extra stiffness from, from having sort of like a core material um, as well. Um, and we can calculate out that, okay, with, with this, with this, um, with this design, a, a, a stringer out of our 15 millimeter core and 600 uh, grams of uh, 600 grams per square meter of fiberglass, with obviously laying up with epoxy, um, this would be enough, um, basically to to hold, to to add enough stiffness and strength to our boat. And you can do the same for all the other stringers. Um, and so we have basically that from there we can kind of look at, okay, what are our pressures? What do we need basically to put on the, as our skins for each of the uh, panels? How much space do we need for the stringers? Um, and how are we going to build the stringers? Um, and from there we kind of know how much, um, how much we basically reinforce what we need to add in every part of the boat. Um, Finally, out of that, we basically can get, um, we can calculate what the weight might be of the boat. Um, so we can basically take, for my actual design, I, I know how much sort of surface area there is for all the panels and all the stringers. Um, and we can get out basically how much, how much weight will be in, in the hull, um, in, the, in the hulls, and then later we can do it for the bridge deck and, and this kind of thing as well. Um, so yeah.
that's basically a quick summary of how we how we check that our boat is um, meeting this very rigorous standard for the ISO 12215. Um, this is the standard basically in Europe. That means you can you can sell your boat if you like, um, and and that's really good because uh, then we can be confident that our boat will hold together um, and that we're not just all making it up as we go along. But yeah, I can really recommend um, looking into this yourself, figuring out, um, figuring out, you know, it's fun to just dig into the calculations and different kinds of materials and change things around and see where you go. And of course, in different higher load parts of the boat, you have to add even re more reinforcement. Um, and yeah, check out that book, Principles of Yacht Design. Feel free to buy the standard if you want to have some extra money on hand as well, because uh, it's a few hundred bucks. Um, and you can check that out. Um, but yeah, it's a fun process. And uh, yeah, keep following along. Hopefully this boat stays together. Hopefully I've done my calculations correctly. Um, yeah, but follow along to see if, if I did everything right or if the boat falls apart. Let's see.